Hello, my name's Jeff Goodwin. Welcome to another watercolor video. We're just gonna do a, a very simple sky and a bit of a, a country um, foreground, some, just some country grass and grasses and a bit of a, a little bit of a field, not much. Um, some trees and a bit of a gate. So we'll start with the sky. I'm gonna wet the, the uh, paper first. This is 300 GSM uh, watercolour paper. I'm just going to wet it. I'm not going to wet all of it, just, um, just in sections across here. Using a fairly, fairly big brush to, you know, to wet this. Oop. Gee, that's annoying. Hair from the brush. It's a cheaper brush, you can tell. Anyway, that's all I've got let, um, available to me right now. I'm also going to wet some of this foreground down here as well. Might as well do the whole thing in bits and pieces. I don't want to overly saturate the paper just enough. Okay, I'm going to do the sky now. I'm going to do it like a, um, a cobalt blue. So I'm just going to get some of that colour in now. Might use a, a new palette as well. Got some colours on an existing palette there, ready, but I just want to use some of this palette here. All right, a little bit of cobalt blue. So I'm just sort of watering it down as I um, as I mix it. A bit more water there. Really water it down. A little bit of this um, yellow ochre, just a bit. Tilt the paper a little bit, let it run just a bit, not too much. It's having a bit of trouble there, so I'll just give it a bit of a hand. It's all right. Just going to soften the edge there. So maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, just up in the top here, just to just to balance it out a little bit. Not too much though. Don't want to overdo it. And maybe just a tiny little, little bit up in the corner there. Okay, that's the sky. We're going to let that sky um, dry, do its own thing. Tilting that around a bit just to let the paint flow. Sorry, I have to tilt this away from the camera at this stage. So that's our sky. Let that dry a bit. Okay. 
Okay, we've done, um, our sky is still drying, but that's okay, I can do some of the foreground here. So I want to get a little bit of this Payne's Grey in with this yellow ochre, just a bit, not much. And I want to just um, sweep down the hillside here. And I also want um, a bit of a darker, perhaps um, a burnt sienna, something like that. So I'll get some burnt sienna and uh, we'll see if we can actually add a bit more color in with that yellow ochre. Just a different sort of gradient, which we'll run down through. It's okay. Put a lighter green there, just in the distance. So we're going to do some um, trees now in the background. Just a suggestion. I like to leave a little bit of light look showing through the trees. A little bit more of this uh, Australian dark leaf green.
use a slightly bigger brush now. Use a burnt sienna in here. Rather a burnt umber. Just a, a hint of these um, trees in the foreground. Uh, one thing with watercolours is that as you're doing the watercolours and they're drying, the, the, the watercolours always dry lighter. So um, you just need to keep an eye out on that. Put it, always put down your watercolors uh, darker than what you perhaps think you will need, a bit darker. And if it's still, you know, if it's still a bit light afterwards, you can always go back over and just sort of fix up bits and pieces to what you like. I like it um, a lot darker under these trees here. I'm just going to be fixing this up, making these a bit darker in areas. These bushes already, you can see they're drying lighter, so I'm darkening them up in places. I like that texture there. I'm going to leave that there and hopefully it'll dry the way I want. Okay. A bit more dark under these trees here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of unify this a little bit. A little bit of shadow coming off there. There we go. Well, we're, no means by, we're by no means finished. I'd like to get some yellow ochre um, in there as well. Ron Ranson, he's a famous watercolour artist, and he says that um, uh, burnt sienna is the great unifier. Uh, that means it brings the picture together. Um, I'd rather use yellow ochre. I think that's the great unifier, but I'm not uh, anywhere near as good as Ron Ranson. Um, so, a little bit of yellow ochre.
I'm going to get a little bit of uh, raw umber in here, which I think is needed. Add that with a tissue. Okay, so that's all right. Got a bit of a mark there up on that um, sky there, which is a bit annoying, but we can fix that. Um, I'll just dab that right now. Okay, we might even make a bird out of that, but you can barely see it anyway. Well, I'm just going to let that dry for a, for a little while, um, but before I let it dry, I'm just going to put a, a side tree on. I think it needs that. Just something on the on the edge there. And I might use a bit more of this uh, burnt humber. So we'll just leave that like that for now. And we might put a tiny bit of, um, just a tiny bit of this Australian dark leaf green in. In the tree, I think we've got enough of that stuff left here in the tray. All right, let's just leave that now. I'll just, um, Blend that into the page there. It just so it doesn't look like it's just sitting there, stuck there. All right, so we'll just leave that for now and then we'll come back and we'll do the fence um, and we'll fix up some grasses, which we'll put in amongst that as well. So you can see it's quite colorful already. Um, I might be able to tilt this up Hopefully the paint, no, the paint's going to run. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. And um, I might be able to smooth this paint out before I turn the, before I pause the camera for a bit. I'll just smooth that out a bit more. Yep, so we'll let that sit there for, for now. Um, we'll come back and then we'll put the fence in and some grasses as well. So back in a sec, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Okay, so it's still drying. I've darkened up these trees a little bit. Um, I'll show you a trick in a minute. I've just got to let those trees dry a bit more. So I want a little bit of, um, I want a little bit more of this yellow ochre just in the foreground here, just to lift that a bit there. That's okay, and I just want a little bit of um, of 
this burnt umber in here as well. Yeah, okay, that's good. We'll leave it like that for a little while. Uh, let's see if we see if we can give um it might still be a bit wet for this but we'll try it out just to give an impression of some branches in here uh, it's just a bit too wet right now so we'll come back and we'll do that a little bit later on there we go out for that one so we'll just wait a little bit longer and uh, we should be able to um, put some impressions of just um, a hint or an impression or a suggestion of a couple of branches in those trees okay we'll try this tool here seems to be working just a hint of um, of some branches. Got to be careful you don't overdo it because um, you, know, you don't want it to look uh, too unnatural. Matter of fact, I don't even think it needs it on the end, so I'll just go over that a bit, just a bit there. Okay, all right. So that's looking okay. We'll put, put a little bit more of this um, foreground colour in. Just in here. And we'll put a little bit more here. let that dry for a while okay uh, it's still wet in places as you can see but I'm going to put a fence in or some gates in the distance I'm going to use a pretty thin brush as you can see these aren't expensive brushes at all uh, but you can buy very expensive brushes 
including a rigger brush, which is um, a brush that, which is very thin. You can get different lengths of rigger brush out to, out to here or perhaps a bit longer. The reason they call them rigger brushes is that they're used to paint uh, the rigging on ships and um, for, for very fine lines. So <laughs> that's how they got their name, but that isn't actually a rigger brush. Uh, but it is a fine brush and I'll use that. So I want to get um, a bit of a dark colour here, so I might just go for a blackish colour. I'm uh, just getting this out of my palette which is off to the side of the camera. Okay, so here I go. I want, I want this to be fairly fine. And I've, got to be, I've got to be careful not to sort of touch that wet paint. Just a hint of a gate. Just getting some more colour. There we are, something like that. And of course there might be a bit of shadow from those posts as well. We've got some shadow coming down here from those trees. We've got some shadow coming across here as well from those trees. So maybe just a hint of some shadow there Maybe a little bit of Payne's Grey. We don't want much, just a, just a tiny bit of a shadow. It's a bit thick from what I want, but it's not too bad. Smooth that out a bit. Smooth that out a bit there. A little bit in here. That'll do, that's fine. Just leave it like that that's okay and we'll keep this drying here because i want to put some grasses in around here and i want to put some maybe some grasses here on the on the corner here maybe a little bit up in here and uh we might even put a bird in the sky and then we'll call it a day all right so uh let's see if we can just before we turn that have a bit of a pause see if we can just put a bit more of a mark in one of these trees that's good. That's all right. Let's try something else, a bit scratchier. It'll do, you just don't want to, you just don't want to overdo it too much because um, 
you don't want it to take away the effect but that's looking pretty good that's not looking too bad at all I might actually um, although we've got that effect of scratching away there to get some white trunks in there I might actually um, uh, put some darker trunks in here and I'll do this by getting a, um, a black, just a complete black. So it shows up fairly strongly, but I don't want to overdo that either. I just want to give the hint of some trunks going up through the trees. We've got some white ones there. So, so. And maybe something over here. That's good. Yeah, so those trees are looking all right. So we'll just um, leave them there for now. That's all right. Okay. So we'll just let that dry a bit more now and then we'll, um, uh, we've done the gate. So we'll just do a little bit of foliage as well um once that dries a bit more and uh, then we will put a bird in the sky perhaps and call it a day okay we're going to do some um some grasses in the foreground and uh, a few other things like that um yeah we'll see how we go um Okay, might use a smaller brush for this one, slightly smaller.
just blend the, that uh, grass through the foreground grass through so it doesn't look like it's just sitting there you know Just, just uh, very slight, thin marks here. You don't want to go too heavy. Very thin marks. There we go. So that looks okay there. We just want to put a little bit of grass in the distance as well. So. There we go. I'm going to use a thinner brush. And perhaps some grass, just uh, just some growth or something like that, just over here. There we go. Just pulling that through like that. I want to get something in the foreground if I can. Um, so I'm just going to work with a slightly bigger brush here and uh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out but um, just want something in here. And I'll have to darken that up. And I might put a little bit of burnt umber in with that grass there, just a bit. Yep, and we want a bit more green, uh, this wonderful colour from Art Spectrum called Australian Dark Leaf Green. I'm just darkening this up because I know it's going to dry a lot lighter. Um, it's not too bad. I don't mind that at all. I might just put a tiny a few strands of grass coming through on the on the edge there, just a few strands.
All right, so we're going to put a bird in the sky now. And um, I think we'll do the bird um, just with black paint. Why not? Just, just an impression of a bird, you know, something really simple. All right, so something really, really simple. Perhaps over to, over to the side here, what do you reckon? Out here somewhere? What do you reckon? All right. That'll do. Lonely bird. Okay. Um, as I said, I usually have I usually have a masking tape, and uh, the masking tape is a lot better than what I'm using. I ran out of masking tape, so <laughs> for this video, I had to use cellophane, and I don't think the cellophane is going to hold the paint in the border as much it doesn't matter it'll give you an idea next time we'll use masking tape so let's just take the cellophane off and see what happens around the border there we go you actually pull this away away from the painting because you don't want it ripping into the painting all right, so you can see it's leaked a little bit, but it is only cellophane that I'm using. So pull it away, away, away from the paper. Yep. And you know what, I can see something I want to do already again in this painting. Sorry about my hand being in the way there. There we go. And the last piece here. It's not too bad actually, the cellophane anyway. Well not cellophane, but um, you know, this sort of sticky tape here. <laughs> you should really be using masking tape. I got away with it though. Got away with it. Um, just before I show you the finished product up close to the camera, I just want to, uh, where is my, yep, here it is. Just think it needs a little, and this is a trick, you know, you've got to be careful you don't overdo a painting and keep adding and adding and adding to the painting. But I just think perhaps Just a little bit of stuff in here. Yep, that's good. And maybe, maybe um, if I can just water this down a bit just to get it to um, the paint to flow a little bit. Perhaps just Yeah. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's wash that brush out. Uh, oh, there's one more thing I've got to do. One more thing I have to do. I might use this. I might use this dark leaf green once again, just for this final part here.
There we go. That's the signature. And there it is. Sky looks pretty good actually. Happy with that. And you can see the sky's lighter down near the horizon. And that's a good idea to do that as well. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll be doing another one very soon for you.